Hey everybody, this is Guillermo with Live Trading with Guillermo. Today is Sunday, March the 5th. I hope you guys had a, a good weekend and still enjoying the last what we have of the weekend. Um, finally feeling, feeling better. I still have a little bit of congestion in my throat here. Uh, I've been coughing, but uh, definitely feeling better. So uh, I've had some questions uh, over the past couple weeks. I haven't done a Q&A video for you all, so I figured I did that today and uh, cover a couple topics. Uh, I'll try not to make it too long. And then, uh, yeah, and then as questions come in, I'll use that as future content uh, for you all. Um, I know some of you have emailed me directly with some of these questions, and I don't always have the time to respond to everybody, so I'll, I'm hoping this video uh, will help you uh, with some of your questions, all right? So the questions I get a lot is, when do you trade? Uh, I, I think you pretty much watch my videos but I have pretty much gone away from trading the open like within the first couple of minutes. I don't do that anymore. I've kind of um, taken a little more cautious approach, uh, maybe at least 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll wait 30 minutes before I turn on my automation. Um, and it can be even later than that. Sometimes I, I do that like when I go drop off the kids or whatever. Sometimes I'll turn it on then. So. I just that's what I've just been doing. Uh, that's just my preference. Uh, you know the automation. Th there's no timing on when you should turn it on. But market open is usually too volatile. I don't recommend it. But any other time, I think you're pretty you're pretty good to go. Uh, so uh, stick to a time that works for you. Uh, test it out, and if that works for you, then just kind of stick with that. Uh, the exception for me is if I see movement right away at the open then i'll jump in but usually what you'll see is this little up and down up and down and it's consolidation and i don't like to do that and that's why i wait at least 15 minutes and then after that the market decides uh which direction is going to go and then uh that's when i turn on my automation obviously direction can change at any time consolidation can happen at any time so you really don't know but uh that's just my advice but also uh, Go with what uh, works well, uh, best for you. Uh, one thing I do not trade is the news. So I wait till things settle down and uh, then I'll trade. I don't always keep on top of the news and then I'll get caught in, in, in an, uh, during an announcement. Usually it's like the Fed and I'll be like, all of a sudden it's like 10 a.m. Eastern and bam, the whole thing just goes nuts. And then I'm like, oh, there must have been a new instrument. So make sure you stay on top of that and uh, don't get caught up in the news. So make sure you... Uh, Wait until things settle. You'll still catch some good moves uh, due to a news event. So kind of be patient. You'll, you'll have opportunities. Uh, so uh, with that, um, here's an example. You can go to forex.com. You, you can find many economic calendars out there. Just Google uh, economic calendar uh, for traders. And then you'll get a whole bunch of different options. Uh, I like this one. But th like I said, there's so many others. Um, and uh, this one you can filter by con by country, so I kind of like that. I, I like to pick the U.S., so that's where I'm based, and that's about the time I trade. And uh, for example, I just pulled up just uh, the United States in the filter, and as you can see, on Monday, March 7th, uh, uh, Chairman Powell is going to testify at 10 Eastern, and you can see the red dot. That's a, that's a big deal. That means you need to be cautious. So at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, I will not be trading at that time. I'm going to sit tight for a little bit, wait for the news to happen, good or bad, and then jump in after that. So other, like I said, market open or news events, that's the time you should think about when you should turn on your, your automation. Uh, other than that, uh, you can pretty much go for it. Uh, if you're a manual trader, uh, again, I, I would recommend that you do not trade. Uh, during this time, uh, whether you use tree trade or any other automation, you probably want to sit tight uh, during news events. My advice, but uh, I know a lot of people can make uh, can make a lot of money during news event, but you can also lose a lot. So it's a it's a risky uh, proposition, but it's up to you on your risk tolerance. So uh, another question I get sometimes. It's for new traders, email me and they'll ask me like, hey, how, how do I load a chart? And, and how do I add my strategy? Uh, how do I add my bot? 
and then how do I add my strategy to my chart? You know, and all those kind of questions. Um, you should be getting uh, some instructions uh, with your automation, but you should just make a habit of becoming familiar with NinjaTrader. So you can go to their YouTube channel and they have a lot of great information that talk about the market, um, trading, all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, but they do have a playlist. So when you go to their channel, hit the playlist and they'll talk about how to get started, uh, charts, order entry, how to save your workspace. All those basics are there and they show you a video how to do it. It's, it's pretty handy. So if you're new to trading if you, or if you're new to NinjaTrader, uh, this would be a great resource because they're basically teaching you uh, how to do that. Uh, you'll also, if you're using a broker uh, like Ninja Trader Brokerage or others, um, you'll get instructions from them on how to connect your data and your account. They'll give you specific instructions. Uh, if you're using Apex Trader funding like I do, then you will go to the Apex Trader website. You'll get your uh, Ninja Trader license from their website. You'll get your rhythmic login and, and password. All of that will be provided to you by Apex. So you make sure you uh, read their setup instructions so you can connect your data uh, through um, your broker or, or Apex or whatever uh, funding company you, you happen to be using. And as always, 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 always trade your automation on SIM for at least a week or longer, okay, until you get consistent results. So uh stick with the change test it for a couple days then make a tweak don't make too many changes at the same time because then you don't really know what's working all right so if it's if it's your stop loss then only tweak your stop loss test it out if that doesn't work out then adjust something else and then go on until you feel comfortable with with uh, the settings that work for you but don't be changing a whole bunch of stuff because then you're not going to know uh what's what what uh, what change actually made a, a positive impact? Uh, some people will do back testing on Ninja Trader Eight. I do not do any back back testing on on Ninja Trader. Uh, you can certainly do that, uh, but as you'll find, back testing isn't l real live trading. So there's stuff that happens during live trading that you can't really back test, right? There's things like internet connection, uh, uh, Windows, uh, your, your uh, software environment, right? Microsoft Windows, Ninja Trader, Trader 8, uh, Rhythmic, you know, when you place your trade, it still has to be executed into the platform. So there's certain things that you just cannot backtest. So you're not going to get the same entries that you will get on a backtest that you'll get in real life. All right, it's a good approximation and you can play around with some settings and, and give you some ideas, but don't uh, automatically say, oh, I backtested, this thing doesn't work. Well, that backtesting is not real trading. So that's why I always tell people, sim, trade like if you were gonna trade like real trading, uh, you know, test everything, test your software, your internet connection, your computer, all of that stuff. So make sure that all your parameters are where they need to be so you can be uh, successful in your trading. Uh, in addition to all of that, uh, you gotta have the right, uh, kind of like the, your trading mentality. Uh, this is not a get rich quick overnight kind of process because it's not. Uh, not every day you're gonna win, uh, but the idea is that you uh, are ahead more often than you're not. That's the, that's the whole point of automation, right? That we get a little bit of an edge, so statistically, we're ahead, then we're not, and and that's kind of how we should approach this. Uh, don't think that you're gonna print money on demand. That's that's not what this is about. And if you think that's what it is, uh, you're gonna be disappointed because it, it does take some uh, a little bit of practice. Um, you got gonna sim, and then but uh, the automation takes a lot of that from you. Uh, it can manage your trade through the entire process. Uh, it has uh, indicators in the background that we don't see and it takes uh, trades and it's all pretty cool, but you still need to test it out. Make sure you got your settings set up just right. I, I'm guilty of that. You've seen my videos. Sometimes I'll have the wrong number of contracts or I'll have the wrong uh, stop loss and things like that. And then I, I sometimes I leave money on the table for not pay, paying attention to my settings. So uh, just want to be uh, cautious of that, okay? Make sure you're ready to roll. 
and then let's see what are, what else is we got oh yeah so people have asked me well what are your settings I, I pretty much tell you every video uh, when I talk I'll tell you there's pretty much the same so I run a 20 tick stop with a 10 tick trail uh, no target so in the rip and then I use fast entry I didn't put that on here and my software has the prop guard so depending on which version uh, you have or, or you're looking to get uh, I recommend the prop guard because that will close out any trades um, that rhythmic may live behind uh, fast entry uh, I think you I like it because you you can be done quicker it takes more trades but it's not like 100% absolutely necessary you can always uh, either not have the option if you didn't purchase it or you can leave it unchecked if you have it and then what it'll do is uh, it'll be just a little bit pickier so you'll get fewer trades but they'll be uh, maybe a little bit higher probability so depending on your trading style uh, you can go that option I like the fast entry I like it when the market's moving and the ripper one will take advantage of that and, and I like it but I'm a little bit because I've been doing this a while I take a little bit more risk uh, but that's just totally up to you on on what you want to do uh, others ask me like should I have a runner or not uh, it, it depends on your trading style and, and what you're trying to achieve right if you're going for like just quick uh, quick hits then you could just do a target you could do 20 ticks you could do 14 you could do 10 ticks and just be boom 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 just little little shots here and here and then you'd be done that's 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 the way to go I like the runners because you can mix uh, some some good money there but as you've seen in some of my videos um, had I had a target I would have actually done better because I was because the trailing stop right uh, I don't quite hit that target and then my 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 trail stops and I would have been better off just having a target but you just never know what's gonna work out best I like when there's activity and I get a nice long runner and that's perfect but that's just my trading style I like the runner but uh, nothing wrong with just setting a target and and do that and as always make sure you, sh you set a profit target if you're doing like 500 bucks a day then stick to that and when you reach it be done do not do not keep trading beyond your goal do not over trade and then uh, people ask me like well should you have a trailing stop um, and again that's a matter of preference uh, as you've seen uh, on some of my videos I'll have a 10 tick trail and I'll have a trade and it does a pullback but not enough to print a whole bar it's just a pullback uh, and I've gotten stopped out and then only to watch that thing just take off and then I'm like dang like I, I missed out I have missed out several times other times it works great and I just keep going when it does a little pullback but sometimes I get stopped out so you don't have to use a trail stop you can you can just uncheck it and then what it will do if there's a big pullback like that it, it, it won't stop out it'll stop out when there's a trend change so if it's going long and the first bar uh, and a pullback it'll stop you out of that bar so you do not have to use the trail I like the trail because as the trade moves along uh, I'm thinking a little bit of profit so if it turns back on me then I'll either uh, make some money or if I do have a, a, a loss it'll be a smaller loss because then I don't I'm not taking a 20 tick hit uh, it might be at break even plus one and, and it's not that big a deal so I prefer the trail but again you don't have to uh, you can play with that have it on or off and you can adjust your tick uh, size so you can do 10 ticks you can do 13 or you can do 7 whatever you uh, prefer uh, then again as I always say make sure you you sim trade your your tick uh, your tick trail and see see how, how it goes and if you like it uh, stick with it I like my 10 tick but it's 10 ticks right it's still quite a bit so even though I get a nice runner when it starts doing the pullback it's gonna pull back and stop me out at 10 so if you think about it it's when it prints the PNL is at the close of the bar but my t my stop might be it will be 10 ticks uh, below the bar so you could be giving up like 20 ticks of profit it, based on the PNL it, it's not the it's not the um, what do you call it uh, current 
PNL, I think is what it's called. It's just a PNL at the time when the bar closed. So anyway, sometimes you'll see my videos, like it'll say a thousand, and then when it stops, it'll be seven hundred profit, right? Because the three hundred was lost between where the bar closed and then where my trail hit. So that's that's why you'll see that discrepancy. And if I'm trading like three contracts, and sometimes I'll do even four contracts, so that number will be significantly even bigger. The difference will be bigger. So just keep that in mind uh, when you when you watch my videos or when you try this for yourself. Uh, what trading bot should I use? Uh, let me minimize this a little bit, get it out of the way. Um, as you know, I've been using uh, true trade bots for gosh over a year now. Uh, I used a lot of their automation and uh, have um, you know my my trading has evolved over time and been using pretty pretty um, higher end automation I would say Ripper one is a good bot I, I really like it um, I like it because it takes very simple trades I can trade uh, uh, one contract if I want to I can trade micros and uh, you know I can have a runner I can take a target and that's pretty much all there is to it there's nothing uh, that, that you need to do uh lastly I, I think there's uh you know have i thought about using the reaper uh, from true trade but then i decided to hold out i, I think i'm gonna hold out for the, the for the signal service uh, they're gonna release that pretty soon i'm waiting to hear the details of that but basically the the way i understand it is that their server will send the signal to your software uh, the software will then ex execute the trade so that's supposed to be more um, higher precision uh, where, you, where you don't have to do anything like basically you don't have any settings like the software just connects and and takes the trade so uh, so when that happens I'm gonna decide like which way will I go will I just stick with the Ripper one uh, or will I either go with the Reaper or a signal service it just depends uh, but for now I'm doing the Ripper one because I do like that bot uh, I think it's a good one uh, and I'm sure I'm still not using it to its full capability because you can trade multiple instruments. I haven't done that yet um, all that much. Uh, I think I'm going to experiment with that too. But uh, yeah, Ripper 1 is still my go-to bot right now. But we'll see. We'll see what the future brings and then I'll see what uh, automation uh, I'll purchase or not. We'll see. We'll just see how it goes. And... Oh yes, before I uh, conclude this video, uh, Apex Trader Funding is having an 80% out sale. Uh, they have these regularly now. Uh, before it was like uh, not very common, but they're having them a lot more regularly, which is great. Uh, you can use my discount code. Uh, you can do 80% at the purchase and renewal. You have reset fees are not included in the discount, all right? Uh, you can then purchase up to 20 accounts per trader. And they're doing a kind of like a raffle so they're giving away 10 100k funded accounts and then the sale ends tuesday march 7th at 11:59 p.m so uh, i just want to thank you all for your support i get emails from uh, several of you i appreciate you uh, if you have questions i'm not tech support just want to clarify that i do not work for true trade or anything like that but sometimes if you reach out to me please send me your settings uh, be a little bit more specific uh, and then maybe i can help you you know if i have time i'll write you back and then uh, sometimes I even share my own settings. I'll take a screenshot and send it to you. But like I said, I do that out of my own time. Uh, not something that I uh, need to do or should do, but I just did that to help out. All right, guys? So, so it's free advice. Uh, so take it, take it for what it is, right? It's free. So with that, uh, I hear somebody knocking my door. So I'm going to go. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk soon. Take care now.